Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. What we're going to do in this video is talk about how to write neutral ionic compounds. So the whole idea is you're going to be given how many that you have iron and oxygen in a compound, and you're going to try to find out how many irons and oxygens there are. The way we do this is by knowing that our ionic compound has to be neutral. So anytime you write an ionic compound, it has to be neutral. And so that means if we know the charges on our cation, the positive one, and our anion, the negative one, then we can figure out how many there are of each type. Okay, so let's work an example. Let's say we have aluminum and oxygen. So that's the two elements that we know are in our ionic compound, but we don't know how many aluminums there are or how many oxygens there are, and that's the whole goal. We want to figure out how many aluminum or oxygens there are. So the first step here is to predict the charge on your ions, and you'll do that from the periodic table. So if you go to the periodic table, the columns tell you the charge, and I'll link to a video below that shows you how to do that. But the column for aluminum gives me plus three, and the column for oxygen gives me minus two. Now, sometimes you have to know the charges from memory. That's true for what are called polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions are ions made up of more than one atom. And they have a charge that you can't predict. And that means you just have to memorize it. So in all chemistry classes, you have to memorize a list of polyatomic ions and their charge, which can be kind of a pain, but is necessary to do problems like this. Okay, so this one we know from memory. And what we want to do is we want to figure out how many aluminums do I need and how many oxygens do I need to make them balance out. First, I'm going to do this with a trick little math technique where we do what's called crossing over. And then I'll explain why this works. So we cross over, and that means our aluminum charge becomes the number of oxygens, and our oxygen charge becomes the number of aluminum. So that's why it's called crossing over. And so what that means then is our aluminum has two that came from the oxygen charge, and our oxygen has three. Okay, so the reason that works is because it makes our compound neutral by taking advantage of the fact that basically, if I have two things at plus three, and three things at minus two, they're gonna match. Let me draw that out. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put two columns, and on the right side, I'm gonna put oxygen, and on the left side, I'm gonna put aluminum. And we're gonna write their charges, so three plus and two minus. Initially, if I just have one of each, I have two minus and three plus. And our whole goal is to get these two guys to match, to make it neutral. Well, if I have three oxygens, O2 minus, O2 minus, then that's going to add up to 6 minus. Now they still don't match, but if I take into account that I have two aluminums, that is going to make it 6 plus. So now those are equal and opposite. So that's what I mean by match. 6 plus and 6 minus cancel out. And so that's why that's a neutral compound. So that's our correct answer. There's one more step down here, which we don't need in this case, which is we want to reduce those numbers if they can. So say, for example, that we got Al2O4. Well, I could actually reduce that and keep it balanced by dividing both by the smallest one. So if you can divide by the smallest one and you get nice whole numbers, then you do that. That would give me AlO2. So we reduce if possible. In this case, if I divide both of them by 2, 3 divided by 2 doesn't give me a whole number, right? So if I divide this guy by 2 and this guy by 2, then I don't get whole numbers. And so that means we don't reduce. But we'll look at an example in just a second where we do reduce. Okay, next one. Here we have magnesium and oxygen. So magnesium is plus two from the position on the periodic table. Oxygen is minus two. Now we cross over and we get Mg2 and O2. All right, now we can see that we've predicted the charge and we've crossed over. Now we can reduce them. And that shouldn't be surprising because if we have Mg and O and they have the same charge, we only need one of each to make it balance out. So having two of each is also neutral, but the numbers are bigger than they need to be. So we'll divide both by two to reduce them. We just divide by the smallest number down there. And that's going to give us MgO. Boop. So notice, it's kind of like when you have a fraction that just can be reduced. You reduce it if you can. In the same way, we have magnesium oxide. Two of each is neutral, but it's more than we need. One magnesium at plus two and one oxygen at plus two is neutral. Okay, now let's do one with a polyatomic ion. Here we predict the charges, or we know it from memory. Calcium is plus 2, we get that from the periodic table. ClO4 is all one ion, a polyatomic ion. So when you look at it, it might look like multiple 
ions, but it's actually just one, and that's what makes it one of our polyatomics. You just have to memorize that it has a minus one charge. So it has a minus one charge. And so once you've memorized that, we follow the same steps. We cross over, and we get Ca1, ClO4. Now here's where some people will get tripped up. Some people will put ClO2. But that's not right. Because that's not ClO4. That's a new polyatomic ion. Instead, we need ClO4. We just need two of them. How do we do that? That's where we use parentheses. So just like in math, we can use parentheses around our species. And if I put a 2 down there, what that 2 is telling me is I have two whole things in the parentheses. So I have two perchlorates. And the reason I write it this way is to communicate to everybody, hey, this is the polyatomic ion perchlorate, and I have two of them. So we got to use those parentheses. Now we reduce the numbers if possible. It's 1 and 2, so they're as reduced as they can be. All right, last example. Magnesium and phosphate, so another polyatomic ion. Magnesium, if we follow step one and predict from the periodic table, we'll get plus two. Phosphate, again, you just have to memorize, is three minus. When we have multiple polyatomics, we always use those parentheses. So that's what we'll do here. We're going to write Mg. We get the three from the phosphate. And now we have PO4. I need two of those. So I have to use parentheses. Anytime you have multiple polyatomics, you use parentheses. And so that's a neutral compound. I can't reduce that anymore. I've crossed over. And I can't reduce it because I have 3 and 2. Okay, so thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions, please ask them below.